So one of the uh, key kinds of spaces we talk about in algebraic topology are simplices. So the general definition is here, the n simplex is the set delta n, it's the set of vectors x in r to the n plus 1. Uh, entry is normally written as x0 up to xn, uh, such that all the entries xi are non-negative, and the sum of the entries is equal to 1. <clears throat> so in particular, you've got your uh, um, the basis vector. So you know, each basis vector EI has a, a one in the ith position and zeros everywhere else. So, so those are, you know, so all the entries are either zero or one, so they're non-negative. And uh, if you take the sum, or well, one of the terms in the sum is equal to one, and all the other terms are equal to zero, so the sum is actually equal to one. Yep. So that shows that each of these basis vectors EI is going to be a, an element of the uh, uh, of the n simplex delta n. So if we look at delta zero, I mean, so that's this picture here. So these black lines are just the axes and then delta zero is just this single red dot here. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the basis vector E zero. Now let's look at the one simplex delta one. Okay, so that, uh, now that contains uh, the two basis vectors E zero and E one. So E zero is kind of one end of this line, E one is the other end of the line, and then the the whole of the one simplex consists of this edge joining the two, joining these two things. Okay, so that's just a one simplex home, is homeomorphic to a unit interval. And, then, and if we go to the two simplex, okay, here's the two simplex here. So again, we've got our, now here we've drawn this with the three x, y, and z axes, and then you've got the unit vectors, uh, E0, E1, E2, uh, the, the three red dots here. Um, and then, uh, <coughs> The, the whole of the two simplex that consists of everything in this uh, this green triangle here. And so the green triangle that kind of cuts across, uh, meeting each of the three axes at, at the corresponding unit vector. Um, and then here's the three simplex. Uh, three simplex uh, again. You've got, now you've got uh, four vertices so called E0, E1, E2, E3. And you've got the whole th three triangles, uh, three triangular faces. But you've got actually got the whole of the solid tetrahedron here. So the, you know, the inside this tetrahedron, there's all the solid space there. That's a, that counts as part of the three simplex. <clears throat> so, so as a part of the same circle of ideas, we can discuss uh, barycentric coordinates. So, so whenever you've got uh, any triangle, you know, any triangle. So here we were drawing a triangle in the plane, but it could be a triangle in R three or something like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So uh, you know, any point in here can be expressed in, with sort of barycentric coordinates. So here, so you can, as it's kind of shown down here, uh, every point you can express it as a uh, as a multiple of a plus a multiple of b plus a multiple of c, uh, with three numbers in this particular for this particular point here. You've got 0.21 times a, 0.58 times b, 0.21 times c, and those three coefficients. You add them up, you get 0.21 plus 0.58 plus 0.21. That that's equal to one. That's how it always works. Uh, any point in the space you, you can be expressed um, as, a, you know, as a multiple of a plus a multiple of b plus a multiple of c, and the sum of the three coefficients uh, is always going to be equal to one. And all the coefficients are actually going to be uh, greater than or equal to zero for points in the middle of the triangle. You can actually kind of still do the same sort of thing if we move outside the triangle. But now, as we moved out here inside here, you can see that the uh, coefficient of c has become minus 0 0.26. It's become negative. And uh, the coefficient, as we cross the boundary to go back into the into the triangle, the coefficient of c becomes zero. And then, yeah, so here we've got this particular point. It's on the edge joining a to b. Uh, this can be expressed as 0.52a plus 0.48b with no uh, no coefficient of c. And that's going to be the same for any point on this edge joining a to b. Uh, the coefficient of c is going to be zero. Uh, the coefficients of a and b are going to be uh, are going to be non-negative, and the sum of them is equal to one. Again, and we could sort of move out here, uh, and, and now now the coefficient of a has become negative as we've escaped from the triangle. Okay. Um, if we move very close to here, you can see that this is kind of 0.95b plus small amounts of a and c. So that's uh, as expected. I mean, if we actually go to b, then you know, the coefficient of b is 1, and the coefficients of a and c are just 0. And if we somewhere close to here, then the coefficient of b is close to 1, and the other two coefficients are small. Um, and if we go here at the kind of midpoint, um, you know, 
Okay, we're looking at the midpoint between B and C. That's 0.5B plus 0.5C. Similarly, we can try and find the midpoint over here. Uh, somewhere around here, we've got uh, uh, um, we've got the midpoint. Uh, if we adjusted this right, we'd have 0.5A plus 0.5C. And then somewhere right in the middle here, uh, uh, we've got approximately a third B, a third A, and a third C. That's going to be the center of the triangle. Um, and uh, remember that the uh, the simplex delta two is defined to be the, uh, you know, the set of triples t naught t one t two with all positive and summing to one. So basically, what we're seeing is that every such triple we get a we get a point in this triangle. So uh, so the triangle is can, can be identified with uh, with delta two in a natural way. Another thing that's good to do with these simplices is to consider their skeleton. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> so here's the, uh, the, the three simplex, delta three. Uh, it's the full simplex, as it's said here. It's a set of points, x0, x1, x2, x3, and r4. And they're all greater than or equal to zero, and the sum is equal to one. And then the k skeleton uh, is where you know, you, uh, you know, you've got only k of the coordinates are non-zero, and the other three minus k are going to be equal to zero. Now, wait. So the, the naught skeleton, yeah, you know, you're only allowed to have one uh, one non-zero coefficient, which means that you have to actually be at one of the uh, basis vectors. So the zero skeleton just consists of the four corners of the tetrahedron. One skeleton, you're allowed to have two non-zero coefficients. Um, so if the yeah, if this one is e zero uh, e and then this one is e one, then along here you've got uh, you know some multiple of e zero plus some multiple of e one and nothing else. And similarly, if this one's e, yeah, that's e0, e1, and that one's e2, then along here you've got all the stuff that's like a, a multiple of e0 plus a multiple of e2 and nothing else. Okay. So that's your one skeleton of the three simplex. And the two skeleton, you're allowed to have uh, three non-zero coefficients. So you're not allowed to be kind of right in the middle of the solid tetrahedron because there all four coefficients would be positive. You're only, you have to be on one of the faces. Okay. So uh, Here's your two skeleton. It consists of the four faces of the tetrahedron, but not the kind of solid space in the middle. And the, the full three skeleton of the uh, of the three simplex. Uh, that's this solid tetrahedron. You know, all of x zero, x one, x two, x three. They're all allowed to be positive. Now, of course, the, uh, you know, the, the the vertices and the edges and the, and the faces they still count count as part of the uh, uh, part of the three skeleton. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, the three, the four coefficients don't all have to be positive, but they're allowed to be positive. 